Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Brody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Dr. Gil Tavon, author of Prosperity Through Active Faith. Dr. Gil, welcome to the show. Hello, Paul Brody, and to all our listeners, hello to you all, and have a wonderful day. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Question number one, what is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Um, from writing over 50 books, five zero books, uh, the one very good tip that I can give to all of you, which I got from my mentor many years ago, is be truthful to yourself. Try to write from within you. Don't try and copy from others. You can get triggered from other writers, other ideas, but rather have your own initiative, have your own inner core value. Line up with who you are to write whatever you wish, and then go and research. Don't try and research and then copy-paste from others. Have your own ideas, polish them through other writers, through many other works that are written there, but give something unique that you might think that be of great service to as many people, a great audience that you can, and focus on the set of audience that you want, whether it's J.K. Rollins to the youth, whether it's you to adults, whatever it is that you want to put out there, make sure that it's your own, make sure that it comes from within you, make sure that it's the truth that you hold by, make sure that it lines up with who you are. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Well, the hardest part, unfortunately, the challenge is will always be money. In other words, there's a difference between self-publishing, as we all know, to traditional publishing, getting a book out there, because we don't write for a year or two a whole book just to put it out there on the shelves to be somewhere there between the millions of books which are published every year. We really want to serve the public. We really want the book to be means to an end and to come and to give the greatest cross-section in which we can really get to the public and sell as many books, not because of the money, just because we really want to put our message across. And to do that, you do need a very good publisher. You do need a great uh, deal of money to really do so. I myself and my partner have gone through a few publishers, and unfortunately, after all the promises, and of course I cannot publish who it was, uh, the books, some of the books were not that successful, not because they're not, because we didn't have the right means to fulfill all that we wanted to achieve. Other books of mine, which I published years ago, were very successful because I found the right publisher, and each one was sold in 80,000 copies, you know, times 28, which is great. So, so we need to get the right publishers, no question about it, that will do the job and got as much interest in publishing the book as we do, uh, because our success is their success, no question about it. Absolutely. I'm a publisher myself, and the one thing we always talk about is we're always all in with our clients because we know that their success is our success, just like you said. And when you take care of people, you do your job you say you're going to do, it makes all the difference in the world. Right. Absolutely. It does. Well, let's talk about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your many book launches that has worked well. Please do say it again because I was unable to hear your last uh, sentence. Sure. Um, please share a yes. marketing strategy that you have used in your book launches that has worked well. Well, what has worked well is being out there. In other words, not just to giving it over to the publisher, but trying to, to bridge the gap and to merge between us, the writers, or me, the writer, and the consumer, the person who's going to read it. In other words, going out there, to whether it's Barnes and Nobles or any other store, making sure you have a lecture over there, handing it over to the people, giving them over the gist, and let's call it the oral law or the, the unspoken word of what, the, the spirit of the word, what the book is all about. Of course, 
uh, there's uh, lots in between of reaching one one branch of Buzz and Overalls and, for example, and that huge audience. And, of course, prayer does the rest. But as many people as you can utilize to get to your own by yourself, as, many, as much as you can try and publish it on your own through any kind of social media that you might have that will really uh, work. And still, I think, heavily depends on the publisher's incentive to really help you and help himself or herself to really put the book out there. So in regards to getting out there, are there any particular strategies or any particular social media sites that you recommend? Because you've done a ton of books. So I'd really like to know what has really worked well for you. Well, as I've said, I met uh, years back. I used to live in Israel. I had an incredible uh, publisher who owns one of the largest companies in Israel for publishing. Uh, he really was there for me. He put out for, for me the graphical designer. He put out for me his entire studio to, to help me because he saw the potential in the books. He had the means and the know-how to all the stores around the country, uh, which is not a small country. It's 7 million people and 7 million people and to get to the right places and the right stores and the right kind of customers that would be interested in my kind of writing. Um, and so we did together very good work. Uh, and so this book sold in quite a few editions uh, and was reprinted a few times. One of the books, which is called, uh, a previous book of mine, which is called The Glory of the Soul. So, so that's, that's something that we really have to take care of, and that is to, to have some kind of, um, well, it's not only a lineup, a common language, a common interest, and an open dialogue with the publisher, who I think has got a major, major task in really not only investing, but getting the book out there, if he really understands and he believes in what you wrote and he wants to get it out there. Not just another book, but he sees the uniqueness of what you have to put out there and to zoom in and to focus on the right kind of audience and public that your book should go to. Well, speaking of... Yes, right. Perfect. And speaking of books, I'd like to know what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Well, it's very, uh, I, I, of course, there are so many books out there which are very, very good. And it's all, it's a question of personal taste, I must say so. It's very much like ice cream or any other kind of food that the person must like it for himself. So it depends who you are and what you read. I personally like to read uh, all the books, all the books I'm saying, books that were written hundreds of years ago that I get in the ancient libraries, because they speak in a, not only in a higher language, but they're very spiritual, uh, they're very clean, they're very pure, they put the message in a very clear and direct way without going about uh, around the bush, and the messages, even though it's, let's, let's call it in, L, in all the English or other languages which I uh, speak or read, but they speak to my heart because it's people that have led a life um, which they were the masters of what they wrote. In other words, they didn't write a book and lived a different kind of life. They wrote a book and they lived by what they wrote. That speaks to me greatly. For example, well, let's speak about somebody that we, something and somebody that we all know, Professor Viktor Frankl, right, the man looking for purpose, right, or Carl Jung's books about dreams. Uh, things of that nature that we all know and we all have maybe seen, heard about, or read, these books do speak to me because of Brian Weiss, Weiss in the United States of America and New York, because these people have gone through their own experience, and they didn't just write a book which they researched in the library, but they've gone through the experience, their own clinic, um, their own uh, journey, and they share with you and they, uh, they unravel and explore to you a part of their uh, life, even though it's quite, um, I would say, um, the modest or intimate part of who they are. And these are the people that I really appreciate because it's not talking about someone else. It's talking and sharing with us the intimacy of what the, the book writer went through himself. And that really touches on the core of, 
of emotions, of intelligence, of spirituality, of mentality, of a way of life. And these are the books that really speak to me. I think they speak to many people, like Harry Potter, because J.K. Rowling was able to tap into somebody's life and show us the star of her books in a way that we all, as kids or as adults, we could identify with very much like the one who's pursuing those, uh, I think it's called the one who's pursuing those flyers, the, the, that's MD doctor that's immigrated to the States from Afghanistan, uh, the many other kind of books that have been published recently, which the, the, the writers share their own story, that they've been through their own journey themselves uh, on all levels. And that book really touches onto you because things that come from the heart are able to reach to your heart. When you read a book, it's an entire experience. The difference between reading a book and watching the same book, watching the same book over the TV, just as Harry Potter, Harry Potter, you can see the movie in two hours, but reading it will take you quite a, f quite a few weeks because when you read a book, you have to use imagination. You have to make up part of the book which is of you. You um, have a dialogue with the book. You interplay with the book because everyone who will read the book will see it in their mind's eye in a different way. And it has to touch your heart for you to get glued to the book and seek reading the next chapter. So the author has to share something so intimate, so important, so touching that you'll want to stay with the book for, for beginning to end. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? Oh, <laughs> well, it depends on the day. I think one of the fam more, more famous quotes, there are quite a few. For example, there's a legendary coach in the States. His name is John Wooden who passed away recently, and he said a few things. One thing he said is the star of a team is the team. In other words, if you want a team player, for example, me as a writer and Paul Brody as a, as a publisher, it is not one star. Uh, you have to share your knowledge, share your experience with others. The star of a team is a team. Another thing that John Wooden said is that men, men or women's character is only noted, is only significant, when you're on your own, when nobody is watching. It's also a very strong kind of quote because we can uh, pretend to be who we're not in the public's eye. But when we're on our own, then you can really see the real person when you peel off the outer uh, layers. There's another beautiful quote which I like, which is by Nietzsche, who used to be a, a European philosopher about 50, 60 years ago. And he quotes and says, that if you have what to live for, what to live for, you'll be able to manage with any how to live for. If you have what to live for, you'll, be, you'll manage any how. Any dash how. Meaning that if I have a good purpose, you know, I deal also with, in my clinic, I'm also a doctor of holistic counseling, so I deal with many kind of patients, some of them past life regression, some of them is depression, suicidal tendencies, uh, anxiety, stress, etc. Life challenges, coaching, business, life, etc. But the motivation is our heart and engine. And some people just wake up with art. You cannot keep it all the time, going to gym, going on a diet, going to pursue the career you want, going to university for many years. It's very challenging and life is grinding away. So if you have a good purpose in front of you, which is what this Nietzsche said, then you'll manage to wake up every morning with a new incentive, new passion, new spirit, new motivation to manage and see through your life to become a very unique person that each one of us is and be able to manifest and show and shine in this world with all your glory. You don't have to say, to say well, it's glory belongs to other people. No, it belongs to each one of us. Each one of us has got a special soul given to them and a special task. So if you believe in yourself and you'll find what your purpose is, I'm sure that you'll also find of how to do it, even though it's very challenging. That's one of the better quotes that I like. Excellent. Well, Dr. Gill, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Well, the best way to find me online is either go on to Life's Wisdom Life, apostrophe S, wisdom.net. That's my, mine and my partner's um, website, 
or you can also go to Shirley and S H I R L I Shirley and Gil.com. That's our website for our books. Or you can also reach me through my phone, which or my email, which is best. Gil G I L T von T for Tommy I V for Victor O N for Nancy at Gmail.com. This will be the best way of reaching me and uh promise that I will try to answer whoever will write to me and a sincere question. I promise to try and be there for you. Dr. Gill, thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thank you so much, um, Paul Brody, for your wonderful show, and you should keep it up and be very successful. God bless. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published Business Book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. 